Hey y'all, welcome back. Well, we're in the kitchen. It's supper time. And um, I'm gonna try something new to me tonight that I think is gonna be really good. Here's hoping. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, Sandy Brock, who has an amazing YouTube channel. She's a sheep farmer. I still don't know if that's the correct thing to call her. Anyway, she raises sheep up in Ontario, Canada. Um, she's actually the one that really pushed me to do this separate cooking channel in addition to my farm channel. So, anyway, she sent me a message today and said, with this recipe for skillet nachos. And I was like, yeah, I do need to make skillet nachos. Uh, so, I looked at that recipe and then I looked at several other recipes. And I am going to put together my own version of skillet nachos. And I'm pretty excited about it. This recipe is going to be very interchangeable. I am using some ingredients that I would probably use different things if I had them, but I don't. So I think and hope that you will see through a lot of my videos that you can use what you have and still make a great meal, even if it's not exactly what someone else uses, right? And you can change it up to your own taste. So um, the stars of the show, one pound of ground round. I'm gonna do uh, dice up some onion and some of those little peppers that I love. And I think I'm gonna use both of these, ranch and chili. I would actually use taco seasoning if I had it, but I don't have it. And I'm gonna throw in some red label musket powder. It has a little kick to it. And we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna put in some kidney beans because this is all I have. They're the cheap ones too from the Dollar General. Um, I would, I was gonna use black beans and then I was gonna use pinto beans and then I was gonna use chili beans, but guess what? I don't have any of those, so kidney beans it is. And I'm gonna drain these good and put some diced tomatoes and some corn and we're gonna put all that on some crushed up tortillas in the skillet with some cheese and then top it with some sour cream. And I think it's gonna be amazing. So here we go. Okay, I'm also excited to teach y'all, well, to show you anyway, it might not be teaching you, but for hamburger, I don't own one of those fancy um, smasher things that they sell these days, but I do own this very old antique potato masher, and it is what I use to mash out my hamburger when I'm browning it. It crumbles it up just right. It's not plastic, so it's not gonna break. I had one of them plastic ones one time, it broke. Maybe I'm a little heavy-handed, but still, we need something that's not gonna break. I found this at the local antique store for like $2. I think I've talked about it on my other channel, but it had red paint all over it, red lead paint, and it was flaking off in my food, so I figured I better um, not let it do that, so I just peeled it all off. And now we have a perfectly clean specimen with which to mash our hamburger. It'll get better once it warms up. See how that works? It works great. You can use the top side, you can use the side side, all the sides. Ooh, that's right. We're gonna have nachos. What do you think about that? It ain't mine, that's what I know. Oh. Anytime I say the word nachos, my husband says, if it's nachos, whose is it? So she said they weren't hers, so she didn't know. Okay, when the meat is about halfway done, I am putting in some diced onion and pepper to cook along with the hamburger. I just like doing, doing it that way when I do my spaghetti sauce or anything that I'm using, onions and peppers with my hamburger, I cook it all together and let it get sauteed together. Right or wrong, it's what I do. We're gonna preheat the oven to 400. That right there, my friends, is bacon grease, which I use to season my skillets. Okay, now I'm gonna drain my hamburger into a cup that's got old hamburger grease in it because I always forget to take it out. Don't have a whole lot of grease. Our meat is pretty lean, pretty lean. Okay, now I'm just 
going to add all the things. Maybe I'll remember to put that over the dog's food tonight. <laughs> okay, so I've added those two packets. Now I'm going to add some red label. Give it a little heat. More. <laughs> add more. I don't want it to be too hot for you. And stir that up a little bit. I might, I might should have done this in the larger skillet. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to get crowded in here. Okay. I'm going to add the corn. I don't know if I'm going to add all of it. Add the tomatoes. No, what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> might as well add it all. This is a lot. <laughs> this is oh, a lot. This is a lot. It's okay. Yeah, a bigger skillet might have been a good idea. <laughs> might have been a good idea. We're going to put it, whoops, we're going to put it in the big skillet when we put it in the oven. It's all good. I'm going to turn it back on low and let this simmer a little bit. Let it all mix. I know there's a better word. Um, what's a word that would be the right word? I don't know come together right now. That's a song. Mm -hmm. What's another song? I know another song. Nacho, nacho, nachos in a pan. We have nachos in a pan. Do you know that song? Nacho, no, macho, 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 macho man. man. Yeah, so. Was that good, Clara? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Okay, y'all, this is good. I just tasted it because that's what you got to do is you got to taste it. I'm pretty excited. I really am. I'm excited about this right here. Yes. Hey, okay. So this has been sitting and cooking for a little bit. I think it is ready to go. This, oh, yeah. my friends, this is something new that I purchased recently. It's a, it's a spritzer, spritzer thing <laughs> that I bought off of Amazon. Um, in the description, I have a Amazon, a link to my Amazon store and I have it on there. If you're interested, I love it. I love it. I've been using it a lot lately when I just want a little bit sprayed. I use this and I'm going to use it on the bottom of this pan. So I'm using my bigger skillet. This one is, I think this one is 12 inches and this one is 10, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that on there. And then I'm gonna take some nachos and crumple them up just a little bit. Not like, they're actually, they're already crumbled up because it's like the bottom of a bag. So I'm gonna do this. Put a layer of that on the bottom and then I'm gonna put, that's all that. Then I'm gonna put <laughs> like half of this across here. If I can do this without making a horrible oh, mess. mess. <laughs> all right, something like that. And then we're gonna throw some cheese. I'm using mozzarella. I'm using what I have, which is mozzarella and Cheddar Jack. I'm using some of both. We're gonna double layer this. And I'm thinking this might be enough for more like six to eight people. But anyway, we're gonna do another layer. This. That. You can never have too much cheese or butter. Let me get my hair out of there. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm gonna put this bad boy in the oven. If I am pick. <laughs> it takes two hands to pick this up. Oh my gosh. All right, and as soon as that's melted, as soon as the cheese is melted, we're eating. So, I'm eating. We are they eating. Might, yeah, they might what I need you that. to do is set the table. Okay. Okay. And here we go. About to see what we've got here. 
hopefully it's a winner winner nacho dinner okay well i would say that skillet nachos were a success do you agree yep definitely yep definitely yep yes ma'am yes yes ma'am um they were very good everybody cleaned their plate except her but she she did eat most of them <laughs> The only thing I will say is that um, if you want really crunchy nachos, uh, you might want to leave them out of the dish and just crumple them on top. So put the other parts, layer the meat and the cheese, put it in the oven until the cheese melts and then crumple the nachos on top. But otherwise, um, we thought it was really good like this, but just know, just be warned that the nachos are gonna be a little soft because they've been cooking. So, um, was really good we will do this again and I was thinking it would have been great with olives on top um like chili um no what are they called the little peppers the little round peppers that pick green chilies jalapenos that's the word I'm looking for if you like hot jalapeno peppers you could do that you could substitute the diced um you could substitute the diced tomatoes with salsa you could do a lot Mexicorn, if I'd had Mexicorn, you know, the little jars of corn that have like the peppers and pimentos and stuff in it, that would be amazing. I would use that if I had it. Um, but anyway, you can just kind of take this and, and make it your own. Make it your own version of beef skillet nachos, but you need to do it because it's good stuff. <laughs> All right, till next time.